Relax, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> My bag did cry. Okay. All right, guys and girls. Last time we were in Paris KubeCon. I sat down with Prasida, and you guys and girls really liked it. So on popular demand, she's back. Yay! But before before we get started, uh, let me uh, ask her to introduce herself for those of you who don't know her. Prasida, can you introduce sure, yourself? Yeah. Thank you, Raj, for having me again. Uh, my name is Prasida Sathe, and I am a principal solution architect for containers and open source. I've been in AWS for uh, more than four years, and I work with the strategic customers over here to solve anything and everything around containers and open source. So Prasida, you have been in AWS for a long time, and a lot of my viewers um, want to get into AWS. So what are some advice would you give them? Okay, sounds good. That's a great question, Raj. So first thing I would say that go to Raj's channel. Yeah? Nice. Can you, you want to say the name of the sure, channel? Sure, Cloud with Raj. Cloud Hopefully with Raj. this is yes. where you are watching this video. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So he has a lot of goodies over there. Uh, around AWS, around all the services, how to use and how to navigate through your career. So please uh, look into those channels, YouTube videos. Uh, second, I would say like yeah. certification. Okay. Uh, you can do cloud practitioner uh, and maybe you can go to the next level professional mm -hmm. or uh, specialization in any area mm -hmm. you are interested in. Mm -hmm. And third, I would say that uh, keep a builder mentality. Mm. So uh, go and spin up, um, uh, you know, like, uh, AWS account, right. uh, everything is in some uh, some of the things you get in free tier, free right? So you can experiment that. Use your current projects and move it to the cloud and see how it works, mm -hmm. right? You will get an experience. You can also put that in your resume. Mm -hmm. And uh, make sure in your resume you project what you did around AWS so that mm -hmm. the recruiters can at least take into consideration, right? And the last thing is like, uh, which is the most important thing is the lead Amazon leadership principles, mm -hmm. right? That is that is the area where you need to focus. I'll share the secret recipe, yeah. uh, what right. I did when I did my interview. Yeah. So I kind of go uh, went into the past few projects, uh, yeah. which I really loved, yeah. uh, the challenging projects, and mapped it with the AWS, uh, Amazon yeah. Leadership Principles. Mm -hmm. And then I created a star format. Mm. I hope everybody knows about yeah. star format, right? Mm -hmm. So I created a star format for each of the uh, projects mm -hmm. and then it was very simple simple for me when uh, the interviewer asked about any leadership principle because I was ready with the project with the technical details with what the outcome I had so mm. I would suggest that please try out and see if that would work. Talking about interviews if you want to get a AWS cloud interview guide with popular interview questions including technical and behavioral the system designs and study notes including this year's reInvents updates, go to www.cloudwithraj.com slash free guide to download this beautiful PDF. All right, back to the video. Talking about coming to AWS, you actually came from uh, Java, program management uh, uh, position before, right? You yeah, were I there. was a Java engineer. Ja you were a Java <laughs> engineer, then you were a product manager. Yeah. And then you became a solutions architect at AWS. Correct. So how can someone switch their career hmm. sure. to cloud yeah. using yeah. their existing experience? Or how did you do it? Definitely. So uh, I started my career as a programmer. Mm. Uh, in fact, I was uh, coding in the park mm -hmm. as in my first job. We did mm -hmm. not have office space. So mm. I was literally coding in the park. Wow, coding and I in the also, park. Yes, and I also joking, it's not joking, it's a serious that uh, the first startup where I was, yeah. my neighbor was uh, Google. Um, wow. And they were exactly the similar startup mode, few folks in Google. And yeah. they asked us to join them and I didn't. And wow. look where I am. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so... <laughs> So, uh, yeah. You were like, who is Google? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, long story short, actually, uh, I enjoyed the development, uh, you know, like IC level mm -hmm. and coding and all those things. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, you focus on one thing. You, you think about, like, how do I solve this problem? How do I make this better? Right. right? How do I deploy this or how do I run this? But you don't go beyond that, like saying that how this really works in a bigger space, right? right? That is what like solution architect actually helps you to give that angle and perspective. Mm -hmm. So you can basically uh, mix the technology with business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can think about future where you want to take it. 
right? right? So you are kind of a mini CTO, you can say, of right. a company. Mm -hmm. So you can leverage the well-architected principles mm -hmm. and all the best practices what uh, you know uh, Amazon has or AWS right. has, and apply to your architecture and share that solution with the customer. Mm -hmm. And being a solution architect, you don't need you don't solve a single problem, mm -hmm. right? Because you have to deal with multiple customers. Right. So. If you're bored with one architecture, no, don't worry. Tomorrow you will get another <laughs> one. <laughs> so so yeah. that's the fun out of it. That's mm -hmm. what I like about it. And, and as part of being solution architect, I can travel and talk in the conferences, mm -hmm. which I really love to evangelize uh, what mm -hmm. I'm working on. Mm -hmm. So that's the other part of it. So I really love my job, what I'm doing right now. Great, great. So uh, talking about your switch, so when you were doing the programming, so let's say you did a lot of programming, how did you start thinking about cloud? Did you start thinking about, okay, how will this work in the cloud? Or you just went and did some certifications and started from scratch? Okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like funny part is, uh, Aid Amazon is my first cloud experience. Wow. Yeah. So okay. far, like before Amazon, like I worked in data center based. Uh, okay. So I, mm -hmm. I did not have. So the reason I got up to speed yes. is through certifications, all your videos and everything. <laughs> nice. So that's mm -hmm. where I stand right now. Got it. So yeah, I mean, you can learn even in four years, like and then accomplish True. True. what you need to be uh, happening in the cloud. Like, yeah. Okay. So you are very cutting edge, Prasida. Like you keep up with all the new things that's coming up, especially in the Kubernetes space. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite go-to place? You can give the viewers a couple, like how can they go learn about new things that's sure, coming sure. up? How do you keep up? So, so continuous learning uh, is the key uh, for uh, keeping you updated for the technology yeah. as well as to keep you young. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, the way I do is actually like I attend all the conferences, yeah. uh, right? And the relevant conferences, I would also suggest like if possible, you should attend. KubeCon or mm -hmm. AWS uh, conferences if you get a chance yeah. and then learn what are the new things are happening, what are the latest technologies, where is the world going towards, right? Mm -hmm. That is one thing. And then, yes, a recertification, right? Okay. That is also important. So it's not that like you're done like three years back and you're done deal. No, right. you have to recertify yourself to make sure that you understand what's currently going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know we don't have time in this mm -hmm. busy world. Right. So what I do is, yeah. uh, I'll share my a secret again. That's it. That's what I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I actually uh, watch your videos oh, or thank you. watch any other Someone like else, uh, yeah. latest uh, KubeCon videos or any other latest trend technology videos, mm -hmm. uh, YouTube or uh, prop podcast, everything while I'm cooking. Wow. Uh, yeah, while yeah, you're cooking. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's the time I get like my own time. I focus on cooking and listening to. Uh, the latest uh, trends what goes on mm -hmm. and other ways like I go for a walk with my dog Kazu yeah. so I have my ear pods and I just listen to all the things what I want to know in this world yeah no I love it because seems like the way you learn is even when you are not in front of the laptop when your brain in, in a little bit of relaxed state you absorb information exactly right? so that you don't forget as well correct correct right? so that's great uh, sometimes when I drive I will listen to some good podcasts and stuff Absolutely. Videos. Yeah, you have the privilege of listening there, but I have to do while cooking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So one thing many people do not know is um, you are someone who has been using Kubernetes for almost 10 years. Mm. You started with on-prem, then went to cloud. So you have a very rich history of Kubernetes. Correct. So what are some of the big trends you are seeing emerging? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, you can say that I started Kubernetes when it, Kubernetes was born. Nice. <laughs> so uh, my first gig around containers was in Cisco for WebEx platform, nice. where I used to work uh, on the OpenShift mm -hmm. for building the containerized application. And then uh, Kubernetes, that time the customers were, uh, this I'm talking about in data centers. Okay, yep. So they were actually trying to build a POC mm -hmm. and then uh, moving, trying to see how they can move to production and all. Mm -hmm. uh, and after a few years, like the cloud, uh, uh, they uh, came up and yeah. then uh, they provided the managed services uh, on Kubernetes. And you fast forward now, uh, Kubernetes is required everywhere, right? Like. Right. Uh, you're talking about the trends uh, right. you need for Kubernetes Edge, 
right? Mm -hmm. Where you can have a smaller distribution for IoT. Mm -hmm. Then you have AI ML orchestration uh, for ML and uh, uh, Gen AI workloads, right? Mm -hmm. For training and inferencing. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, GitOps, yeah? Right. That's one of the things like, uh, which is picking up related to Kubernetes to simplify the deployment. Right. Uh, then uh, you have service mesh, right? right. Um, and that is the area like people want to uh, simplify like how the networking flows in the among the different clusters mm -hmm. or different regions. So you can build a lot of configuration around that. And the last one definitely is the platform engineering, mm. right? So that uh, helps simplify, uh, design some principles around uh, how to build applications and deploy applications. Got it. I want to talk a little bit more on platform engineering, but before that, so since you have seen the whole evolution, how hard was it to manage Kubernetes on-prem compared to now on the cloud? On-prem, it was a little bit harder, I would say, yeah. than uh, cloud because you you know Kubernetes, right? Like control yeah. plane, right. right? Managing the API server, yeah. HCD, and yeah. all those things. It's not easy. It's right. super complex. Mm -hmm. So I would say like moving to the cloud with the managed option yeah. is always better uh, right. for any small scale, uh, small scale business when mm -hmm. they are starting around the Kubernetes, definitely. Got but it. there are cases like who still wants to keep in the data center and we mm -hmm. have the option at AWS, right, right. which is called EKS hybrid, right? So there yeah. are options for both cases. Excellent. Okay, so going back to platform engineering, so let's start with why do a customer need platform engineering? Oh yeah, team. yeah, definitely, definitely. So uh, you must have seen like the developers are struggling, right? Like to uh, ask for an infrastructure, right? right. Uh, and then one platform, one team is building a particular way, another one is building in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's very hard when it goes out of beyond the scale, right? Yeah. So platform engineering comes over there to help and streamline the process. Mm -hmm. And it helps you to build the guardrail around that, mm -hmm. best practices around that, so that the developers can just focus on the code mm -hmm. rather than the infrastructure concerns. Mm. So now talking about, since you already mentioned platform engineering, I want to introduce a, a initiative uh, which is called Kanu, okay. C-N-O-E. Okay. Uh, so it is cloud uh, native uh, operational excellence. Mm -hmm. And this initiative is uh, in collaboration with the uh, AWS uh, enterprise customers, mm -hmm. right? And we are uh, basically building uh, something collaboratively. We call it kind of an open source uh, reference implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Kanu, uh, if you think about it, uh, it's like an IDP builder, okay. right? Like uh, internal developer platform, that's what mm -hmm. I mean to say. And uh, if, a, if any small mm -hmm. company comes up and says, hey, I want to blend, uh, build a platform engineering, where do mm -hmm. they go? Mm -hmm. The CNCF technology, you know how vast it is, like yes. thousands of software around, around there. So how, where do they start? So they can come to this canoe okay. and they can look at this IDP builder, build quickly based on the foundational CNCF uh, package or tools or softwares mm -hmm. what we uh, provide them, mm -hmm. uh, which comes with the uh, backstage, Argo CD, mm -hmm. uh, Git ES server, and then um, also Crossplane. So they can use this and build their environment and then uh, add more stacks to it and develop it and move it forward. So it simplifies the entire platform engineering for you. Do you already have examples and quick starts out there? Yes. So you are saying customers can just go and start running with it? Yes. We have like a lot of our enterprise uh, you know, companies over there have mm -hmm. uh, built this the IDP in their company mm -hmm. using this uh, best practices. Oh, that's cool. So they have contributed everything to it. Like uh, I think you can see like on the website, uh, which you will definitely sure. share. So we have uh, Autodesk, we have Adobe, mm -hmm. uh, we have Intuit, we have Siemens. We have a lot many companies contributing to this. Got it. So basically, um, platform engineering is great, but there are some pain points. So what seems like is this canoe is trying to uh, reduce the overhead and the pain points of adopting this platform uh, engineering. Correct. And they can just literally get started Correct. without knowing how to integrate all these things with each exactly, other. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So all the complexities uh, we build, we keep yeah. give you as a foundation, and then you can customize this based on your. So we have a lot of reference implementation okay. uh, based on different stack. Even the providers have contributed to it. Okay. Like so uh, yeah, you can take a look at it. 
Okay, great. Yeah, I'll give the link uh, in yeah. the description. Uh, so talking about CNCF, right? Uh, CNCF landscape has expanded mm -hmm. a lot. Right. Like probably when you started 10 years back, there was not even 10% of what we have today. Exactly. So a lot of my viewers are actually trying to get into cloud, trying to get a job in Kubernetes. So what are some of the CNCF tools that you recommend viewers to start with? Absolutely, great question. Uh, I had the same question a few years back, <laughs> <laughs> so definitely. So uh, you ended up learning all of them. Learning all of them, yeah. <laughs> so I would say that like, uh, just take a look at the CNCF stack landscape. It mm -hmm. is huge, but I definitely know everybody has their preference right yeah. like networking or storage or whatever area auto scaling right mm -hmm. you pick on that area and learn like how to use those technologies integrate with your own projects and try it out mm -hmm. and once you are uh, comfortable with that i would say like go to the next step and start actually uh, contributing to those open source mm. so that really helps like when you put that on your resume right. saying that you have uh, contributed to service mesh istio mm -hmm. uh, definitely the employer like whoever is interviewing of you course. will mm -hmm. take you because you are one of the core uh, open mm -hmm. source contributor over there. So that really helps actually. Okay, yeah. and then like to contribute, what's the expectation? Do they need to learn some programming language or they can do documentation? Like how, how can yeah, someone so, contribute? Uh, it depends upon the which software or technology mm -hmm. you choose. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are written in uh, you know Rust and some of them are written in Java. Yeah. Some of them are written in Go. So right. it depends upon what your skill area is and pick yeah. those things from the stack yeah. and build upon that. So Got you it. have a lot of flexibility in terms of that. Got it. All the guests have to go through some rapid fire question and answer. Oh wow. Okay. Which you have no idea. Okay. So we'll see, we'll see uh, how your answers are this time. Sure, yeah. Okay, so favorite reInvent announcement so far? Mm, EKS Auto Mode. EKS Auto Mode? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, the AWS service that you use the most? Carpenter. Carpenter? Yes. Yeah, Carpenter is really good. Okay, Xbox or PlayStation? 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 Yeah, I okay. don't are like both, but okay. yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Are you a, Dog person or cat person? Dog, of course. Dog, of course. Have you ever had a cat? No, I had in my, like when I was a child, but yeah. I prefer dog, I guess, now Got more. it, got it. <laughs> That's good. PC or Mac? PC or Mac. Mac, of course. Yeah, Mac. Mac? Yeah. Okay. Favorite way of reading a book? Physical copy, audio book, Kindle? Uh, yeah, I'm very bad at reading the uh, book. Yeah. But I like everything in the picture. So yeah. I prefer like uh, watching the videos and getting got information it. from there, yeah. Got it, got it. Okay, favorite food that you like to cook? That I lo like to cook. Um, I think I mentioned you last time, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always the rasam. Always the rasam? <laughs> okay, all right. If you can invite someone to your home, dead or alive, hmm. for dinner, hmm. who would you invite? Okay, this time I'm yeah. going to invite Elon Musk. All right. You want to chat with him, what's going on and stuff? Yes, yes. Yeah. I want to. I want him to build something like a Hyperloop yeah. so that I can reach India in probably in five minutes. That would be incredible, actually, yeah, for yeah. all of us who are from India. Exactly, yeah, exactly. If you can solve that. Yeah, 24 hours to five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I will give him rasam. You give him rasam? <laughs> all right, Elon, if you're watching. You can get some good homemade rasam. Yes, yes. If you can give us a fast way to travel from here to India. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Great. Prasida, how can people connect with you? Uh, via LinkedIn, I'm very active. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's the best way so far. I'm not on Twitter or anywhere else. So just contact me on LinkedIn. Got it. All right. Prasida, thanks for coming back and sharing your wisdom and knowledge with my viewers. Okay. Thank you, Raj, for having me again. Of Thank course, you. of course. All right.